Charlie G, the objective of this essay is to compare Miles Morales from the Ultimate Bendis run, the video game adaptation, and the film interpretation. This essay will especially focus on Spider-Verse, because the other two had their own essays. And where will it all end? However, since all three versions come from three different mediums, it's important to address how the stories are optimised differently. The narrative of the game has to facilitate a Miles that is mechanically interesting as much as narratively interesting. <laughs> While the comic must be abstract enough for the reader to interpret it personally, as Scott McCloud argued, you give life to these characters just by reading. Whereas a film has to put tightness above all, character, plot, design, dialogue, editing, etc, they all must contribute and sustain a pattern of ideas to successfully produce an effective theme. Not to mention the game is about like what, 10 hours long, the film is under 2, and the comic is however long you take. So the information density is also very different. Officer Spider-Man! Therefore to construct this essay, I'm going to use the literary interest of trauma as the artistic link between texts. Why trauma? Cause it's what I do. And also I just read a bunch of papers for another video. <laughs> Trauma is often defined as the form of mnemonic failure because of how the mind becomes trapped by a painful past and becomes unable to process the present. As Jeffrey Frager argued, trauma yields an in-the-present impoverished experience of oneself, diminished self-regard in relation to the overwhelming power of external events. Don't go. Miles' story from Into the Spider-Verse is focused on how trauma specifically causes discontinuity in one's self-identity. It opens with him being sent to a school he hates, then he loses control of his own body. Then the main traumatic rupture is Miles' failure to aid Peter Parker, which contributes to his death. I should go up there and help him. Who am I kidding? I should not do that. Miles is not in control of his life, he's merely a responder to it, therefore his lack of agency begins to cause his understanding with who he is to fracture. He went from the coolest kid on the street to someone who is dwarfed by everyone else. He's not ready, it's obvious. No way. Although this theme isn't obviously new in itself for the reason that a huge chunk of superhero fiction inhabits this sort of psychological space, the mask, the costume and the origin story in fact, it's often either literally or metaphorically used to show reconciliation with the past, but Spider-Verse puts a highlight to this because the film is framed around Miles psychologically repairing his self-image to the extent that the main conflict isn't really Miles beating Kingpin, but him fighting his own self-esteem. Consequently, the most important scene, the apotheosis stage, Campbell Yo, comes in the form of Miles believing in himself and literally taking a leap of faith. The scene explicitly features a string of memories, words from his father, mother, uncle, and even Peter Parker, clearing a path through his feelings of discontinuity and reassembling his life's narrative. I see this, this spark in you, it's, it's amazing, it's why I push you, but it's yours. Whatever you choose to do with it, you'll be great. Again, quite literally symbolised by the comic, Miles then returns to the scene of the crime, if you will, and redeems himself by doing the very thing that he initially failed at. Therefore, the entire full three-act plot structure is shaped around Miles appropriating all of those ruptures that killed who he was and becoming a new man. Trauma is beaten by awareness. Subsequently, this broadly complies with Miles' original comic arc because the broad strokes are very similar. Miles was initially motivated by the guilt of Peter Parker's death, his rise comes from his capacity to participate in a community of superheroes, and golly, the third act comes in the form of Miles reconciling with his father. However, the details are radically different. Peter's death may have similarly pushed Miles to rethinking who he is, but it's not actually a point of trauma. There was no reasonable way for Miles to intervene because by the time he arrived, Peter Parker was already dead. Therefore, the memory of failing Spider-Man didn't fracture Miles' self-esteem. Instead, it allowed him to 
review it, move out of the repressed values he inherited from his father, and answer the wants of a whole other world. Conversely, the traumatic rupture instead happens in issue 22, which is the end of Act 2 and start of Act 3 in the original Bendis run. Miles' mother is killed by a stray bullet after a confrontation with Venom, and the pain of this experience causes him to retire from being Spider-Man for a full year until Jessica Drew guides him to reconcile with his memories and restore his sense of agency with his identity. As a result, trauma was a test for Comic Mouse as opposed to his origins to see if he can restore a sense of continuity with Spider-Man, in quotation marks, and yet reinvent it in a way that it didn't answer what other people wanted, but what he personally wanted. It was a point of symbolic evolution. The game does a completely different thing though, because Miles' father died in the previous game, and it's not even related to his origins as Spider-Man. Instead, he's given a different role. Alternatively, the game positions the antagonist Finn as the one who suffers from the inability to process time because after her brother was killed by Roxxon, she can't help but to arrogantly commit to a mission to blow up their building, despite being warned that it would destroy Harlem. Finn, the reactor! Come near me again. I'll kill you. On one hand, this shift is presumably because it's very hard to communicate trauma as an interactive experience, unless you're willing to sacrifice immediate fun to experiment with the relationship between the player and the character, and that will risk alienating a huge portion of the consumer base. And on the other hand, the game is just simply themed around something different, which is collective memory and social healing. As Barbara Mistel argued, while it is the individual who remembers, remembering is more than a personal act, as even the most personal memories are embedded in social context and shaped by social factors. Wow, look at this. Goober central. Rig looking suave as ever though. Yeah. Therefore, memories are powerful bonds between people and are important in sustaining a sense of solidarity. For Game Miles, his identity is entirely tied to his membership of Harlem's community. The game opens with him leaving a train, helping strangers, and looking up to admire the Spider-Man Muriel. Hey, uh, you think you're gonna add that new Spider-Man too? The kid? Yeah, maybe. Original's just my guy, you know? Yeah, I know. This image summarizes more or less the entire game's focus. It's about Miles taking his place in Spider-Man's legacy by earning his memory in Harlem's history. Subsequently, Miles' mother, Rio, fights Roxxon, a company interested in gentrifying Harlem on a political level with her campaign, while Miles fights the underground, a gang linked to Finn trying to take over Harlem, and they both utilize collective memory as their weapon. Rio rallies the community behind her with their shared experiences of old Harlem. Do you remember what we lost when Roxxon bulldozed this block? St. Teresa's church was choir. Miles attempts to heal Finn with shared memories of her brother. You know, Rick was... he was the best. However, Miles fails because not only does he follow his uncle's bad advice, but he never really quite understood that he can't restore Finn back to her old self, because whoever she was will never be convincing to her again. This is the only way I can beat him. I need you to look the other way. Adaptation is more important than restoration. She even mocks Miles by sending him to the old science museum where they shared an important memory together and lays a trap. But Miles does give her a chance to reconcile with herself when he was going to sacrifice his life by absorbing all the new form reactor energy like her brother did. Although this time she has the opportunity to intervene and save him in a super abstract way like his mother, it is through giving representation to the past that Miles is able to heal someone else. It's okay. I can't just let go. Let go. Consequently, this whole theme of representation paving the way for mnemonic healing is the strongest place where the game, film, and comic intersect. In Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, the multiverse characters are used to shift the boundaries of Miles' trauma from the realms of the individual to the social because they had similar tragedies. The hardest thing about this job is you can't always save everybody. Like if it was my fault, you wouldn't understand. Miles, we're probably the only ones who do understand. And it's through these experiences, not their powers that define them as a community. Therefore, despite how they don't necessarily show Miles how to recover, they importantly show him a path. It's like in The Matrix when Morpheus said, There's a difference between knowing the path and walking the path. 
And a similar deal is done in the comics, where the community Miles inherits from Peter Parker in the form of Gwen and Jessica Drew are able to use their traumatic experiences to give Miles a way to comprehend the world through the relevance of Spider-Man's symbolic strength, therefore helping him to heal. This trilogy started with a concern about how the intersection of self-identity and social identity affected every interpretation of Miles Morales. And there's another quote from Barbara Misto that I really dig and I think kind of ties everything together. Collective memory is not just historical knowledge, as it is the experience mediated by representation of the past that enacts and gives substance to the group's identity. Memory helps in the construction of collective identities and boundaries. In every version, Spider-Man, in quotation marks, to Miles is more than a mass costume or a journey. It's a collection of memories, values, and communities he inherits from Peter Parker. And in every interpretation, it functions as an important mechanism to heal trauma for the reason that whoever suffers from a breakdown of who they are, be it Miles or Finn, they're always healed by living up to their shared identity. What we remember is what we become. And that's the key to negotiating with changes and things that don't seem processable. Being who we are against what people think we are, being who we are against what we become, or being what someone else needs. The comic, the film, and the game all shows us that we don't ever remember alone. So yeah, before everyone realizes that I've made an essay that's too abstract to be useful, I'm gonna end this essay with another crappy sad piano tribute because I'm kind of addicted to making these. I just washed my hands, that's why they're wet. No other reason. Hey. <laughs> you serious, Uncle Aaron? I'm telling you, man, it's science.